So I will make a talk on the results of the project, uh, Russia, Finland, 30 miles. I'll also cover possibility of uh, marinas in the east of the Gulf of Finland. Yacht or oh, sailing tourism. Uh, just a second, is one of the most promising and uh, common types of uh, water tourism, including in the Baltic Sea. If we look at the statistics of yachts dropping anchor in uh, Finland, Estonia and so on, they're pretty impressive. And uh, St. Petersburg pales in uh, comparison. As of 2019, there were a mere 60, uh, 60 yacht stoppages in St. Petersburg. Uh, this is how ports or harbors look in uh, Tallinn. If we look at the current state of St. Petersburg, your tourism it can be called as deplorable. Other ports receive uh, several thousands of yachts every year. Right now, St. Petersburg, which could generate millions in euro, can only count yachts that are few and far between. Many of private tourists that want to visit the northern capital of Russia have to leave their boats in Helsinki or Tallinn and then take a flight to St. Petersburg. On July 25th, 2018, the Northwestern Board Directorate of the FSB announced that they're going to terminate registration of small boats in Viborg uh, because there were no proper conditions in place for customs officers to work in. That was a formal explanation. Uh, this is how Viborg Harbor looked. So for foreign sailors, it means that St. Petersburg is an ex-ball. It doesn't make sense to sail to Viborg. The minimum duration of the passage uh, from Kotka, customs point to Russian border is 80 miles. It's also impossible to obtain a Russian visa on the border. Uh, there is a limited number of decent marinas along the shoreline. So for foreign sailors, it means inaccessibility of St. Petersburg, because it doesn't make sense to, sense to enter Viborg, and it's impossible to overcome all the way to St. Petersburg in one day of sailing. Uh, the minimum duration of the passage from uh, the nearest customs point in Finland, which is Kotka, uh, to the Russian border is 80 miles. It's not possible to obtain a Russian visa on the border, which is a good practice. There is lack of uh, marinas and uh, cafes and shower rooms along the shoreline is out of the question, including uh, any medical assistance. So even if you, you may have a good infrastructure, your city or town uh, will not draw sailors. At the moment, uh, there is no one going through Fort at Constantine. There's no one to process as foreigners. A lack of uh, distinct and efficient uh, state policy 
led to the closure of more than 10 yacht clubs and organized parking lots. At the end of last year, because of struggle between city officials, developers and trade unions, largest and oldest river yacht club of Russia ceased to exist and hundreds of owners lost their parking lots. According to the March 2019 statistics, it's the freshest statistics we have. So according to the March 2019 study on uh, modern status of uh, economics, there were only 477 47,000 small boats in the city. In the meantime, over the past four years, the fleet has grown steadily by 10, 13%. Despite growing demand for parking, the draft general plan of St. Petersburg almost does not provide for new uh, yacht places. Even though millions were invested in the design of a new concept, but unfortunately it does not solve the situation with parking lots. But there is a positive bit of news as well. For example, a project uh, in Ochta Center in St. Petersburg, uh, where Yacht Club is being constructed with support of uh, Gazprom. And uh, then along Kronstadt, coast. This project is supervised by Ksenia Shoigu, daughter of the defense minister. Financing is 4.5 billion rubles. So there is every chance that the construction will be completed successfully. I had a chance uh, to personally talk to Xenia, where she launched uh, this project. She presented a big map. And she said by end of 2024, the world's potentially largest yacht marina should be completed, should be built in Kronstadt. Is it going to become a mecca for sailors? Only time will show. The adopted concept for the development of yacht tourism in St. Petersburg mentions establishment of yacht club on Kananierski Island, but only pending investors. So if someone is ready uh, to sacrifice money with a known payback period, uh, then there is a good chance that it will work out. Uh, we should give credit to Russian investors who are trying to develop infrastructure the best they can. So in 2019, with assistance of Committee for Tourism and Department of Transport of Leningrad region, the uh, book marina.com project was launched in the region. To develop a network of guest yacht berths. Uh, Mr. Nemtsov uh, is the forefather of, of this idea. It's uh, a lot like uh, booking.com for tailor for sailors, which help will help uh, sailors uh, look for yacht berths and it will also provide other services like a border and customs formalities insurance supplying the crew with food fuel uh, repair towing boats and so on so it might be very handy and if it takes off it will be great for everybody we need to give a push uh, to the owners of yards 
to bring them in line with uh, European standards. At the moment, this platform is open for all yacht clubs who want to join and there are no membership fees. So there is a stark contrast between the level and quality of infrastructure development for yacht tourism development in the European part of the Baltic Sea and uh, Russia. As a result, foreign tourists suffer from the unsettled surroundings of St. Petersburg and Viborg. This is how a uh, well set up marina in Finland looks. As I mentioned earlier, sailing for one day to reach uh, St. Petersburg is a pretty tall order, especially if you travel with your family. So uh, green parking places are necessary to meet tourists' needs. St. Petersburg needs at least 500 guest berths, which is not possible. You could also place parking areas in green areas. These are green harbors or nature harbors as a temporary solution. In Russian, uh, nature harbors as a legal phenomenon does not exist. Uh, there are other concepts uh, like uh, a guest harbor where you could uh, park your small boat, but still experts manage to formulate nature harbors. This is a section of the water area near the coast intended for temporary parking of yachts in the water area partially protected from waves. The site must allow parking of three or more yachts. The nature harbors may or may not allow crews to go ashore for short rest with a field camp. A nature and harbor may be an anchorage parking or an anchorage, but with the possibility of mooring to the shore. A nature harbor is arguably, arguably does not provide any paid services. It's something where you can uh, moor in emergency. It should not contravene Russian legislation or any other restrictions of proprietary rights. For safety reasons, it is necessary uh, to provide buoys and um, other safety features. Are there any nature harbors like that in the Gulf of Finland? To answer this question, a project was launched and is being implemented. It's called 30 Miles Russia and Finland. This is uh, the most favorable stretch for passing by a non-specialized yacht. It's a pretty comfortable time for sailing. So it is implemented uh, by Ron Hicks. Our organization from St. Petersburg of sailing enthusiasts. From Finland, there is uh, Southeast Finland University of Applied Sciences, XAMC, and Cursor OI. In a nutshell, the project aims to replicate the successful experience of Finland and Estonia project where new harbors appeared along the border. 30 mile is found to be optimal because you can cover this distance uh, during daytime. As you can see, the project area is shown uh, with the red line all the way to the administrative part of St. Petersburg, including southern 
and northern parts of the Gulf on Finland. Contributors to this study are prominent Russian researchers in uh, special planning, CEO of the Yermak Northwest Institute, member of the National Tourism Academy, Mr. Andre Lapo and his colleague, the deputy director, a member of the working group Helcom Vasap MSP, Larissa Danilova. They've done tremendous amount of work reviewing. So they carefully reviewed the water area in the Gulf of Finland to see if extra marinas and harbors could be added uh, to the uh, nature harbor regulation of St. Petersburg according to the 30 mile concept. 12 new locations for marinas, 28 green berths and 10 slipways have been proposed for consideration. Proposal have been formed based on uh, open source uh, maps. There is a link down below, which leads to more details of this study. In the interest of time, I'm unable to cover all of it. But if you want to peruse this analytical report, this is the link for you. So five uh, routes were have been proposed based on the 30 mile concept and potential sites. For example, this is one of these routes for sailors, a small boat riders. This is most optimal solution. So really, a lot of work has been done. All of that uh, gives you an idea about uh, how you can sail by following a special ring, external ring of the Gulf of Finland. But there isn't a single place for green births. Also, there is no state authority which is responsible for organizing or using uh, such harbors. So last summer in 2020. Actually, I wanted to say that all this work has been done as part of the Um, the maritime spatial planning maps developed on the project. This table actually shows all these coordinates of the green harbors developed by Daniel Lapoy. You see 28 of them here. And I mentioned already that for the detailed project development, like uh, our 30 miles project, we have done on-site survey of the pre-selected port uh, piers and harbors when we were inspecting uh, the southern parts of the Bay of Finland, three crews of uh, U-boats were involved there. In the course of the investigation, as you can see, there's a small Vesutsky Isles. This is the northern part of Malli Vikhrivoy Island. In the course of an inspection of the potential pier places, we have done cleaning activities to clean out and sweep the potential areas for the future green natural piers. 
And in the last season, during the navigation period, we managed to inspect 11 of about 28 of the proposed locations. And the results of the expeditions are posted on Facebook on the page of the Rusfin 30 miles program. You can see the link to this information. Our organization was also involved in this work. We sent our expedition to the Moshni Island, which became part of that general effort. The results of the visual inspection on the coastal area of the Bay of Finland have demonstrated that they're not really fit to arrange the green harbors because of the difficult navigation situation and the total lack of any base of harbors uh, for natural uh, mooring of small ships and boats. And because of the existing border restrictions of the visitation of different places, the possibility of these green piers and the navigation requirements between the sites of marinas and uh, piers, natural and historical significance of these pier sites, the most acceptable for us was the Vyborg Bay, Bay of Vyborg uh, area. The main safety recommendations when visiting, sorry, when visiting green parking areas are to follow the safety instructions for navigation in the coastal waters of the Russian Federation, as well as study of the route using the internet resource below, where you can get detailed information about safe approaches to parking places that are dangerous for small boats, as well as the location of navigation signs. I would like to offer to your attention an alternative method of how to organize the mobile green park that we proposed. It's done also in the framework of the implementation of the uh, Russia Finland 30 mile project when we implemented quite an unorthodox project of a green parking called uh, Houseboat. In 2021, we designed and uh, built a comfortable boat home, which can provide all sorts of services to the traveling, traveling boats, like the temporary uh, safe mooring, uh, replenishment of water and food, technical accommodation of our houseboat allows us to provide remote services at any time of day or night. Smart house principles and the observation functions allows them to provide all sorts of services. Now we are on the uh, winter parking and we are preparing for the beginning of the navigation period or season to start providing services to the sailboats. For the implementation of the proposals on green parking areas contained in this work, First of all, we need to introduce the actual notion of a green pier or green parking into our legislation. As far as the definition is concerned, uh, we have none. And the strategy of the socioeconomic development of the Leningrad region until the period 2030 does foresee the development and implementation of a complex of measures to create tourism and accommodating infrastructure, including also the roadside infrastructure and green parkings. Although this concept implies, of course, green parking areas for cars, but we are still working on it. And we want to expand the notion of the green parking by including also the maritime principle and the government is quite open to accept our recommendations. This way, the yacht green parking areas identified uh, during our project can be potentially included into the regional tourism development program. Out of the recent positive, optimistic news, in October 2021, the government of Russia approved the concept for the development of yacht tourism in Russia for the period of until 2030. Sorry, I'm not there yet. The Russian tourism concept foresees the development of uh, ramified all year round complexes with the hotels, uh, uh, shops, uh, restaurants, museums, and uh, gift shops. The North 
western part of Russia is still in the very beginning of this journey, and there's a lot of work needs to be done for the development of infrastructure, no matter how strange it sounds, especially for our foreign colleagues and listeners, the yacht tourism in Russia as such is uh, only burgeoning, is uh, still in its nascent stage. We are the pioneers of that event, creation of uh, green parking areas for yachts is something that the region will have to do along the lines of the development of water and your tourism in particular. I'm done with my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope I was in time. I was looking at my watch. You can call me by either phone or WhatsApp. I'm in Instagram as well. I have an email, so I'm prepared to answer whatever questions you have.